what I tell folks is, you know, this entire book is a dance with literally hundreds of people who I interviewed for the book and who gave me the different perspective and helped me put it together. But the truth is that we need to be able to be small detail and we need to be big picture at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, for a lot of people, this sounds daunting, but you and I are in the business of uh, playing a big game getting results other people haven't got before. So we both know it's not meant to be easy. But if you come at it with this formula, you're likely to succeed. So, um, so we've spoken about be the person who really knows, be an audacious dreamer, be simultaneously analytical and creative. The fourth one, John, and this is a classic, is very simple. Be prolific. Do a lot of stuff. Develop your resilience. And one of my favorite quotes is that winners will always lose more than losers because they're trying more things. Mm -hmm. You know, winners will always miss more than losers because they're taking more shots. As the great Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the sure. shots you don't take. And so I'm always on the phone. I'm always talking to people. I'm taking advantage of opportunities like this, John, because the higher your activity rate, mm -hmm. uh, the more you can do things of quality, the greater the odds in your favor. So I'm not talking about being frenetic. <laughs> you know, there's a quote that I have that, you know, don't be so busy doing that you don't achieve anything. Mm -hmm. I'm saying do the right things and do a lot of the right things. And some of them are going to pay out. And one of them, for example, is making sure that you're reaching out to your key prospects or key stakeholders as often as possible. Because as someone once said to me, a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. Yep. So at some point in time, you're going to be reaching someone just when they're looking for your kind of service. And if you reach out to enough people enough times, you'll find the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. However, the problem is that, uh, especially in sales, a lot of folks get their egos bruised. And uh, when they don't get the yes, they think the no is an affliction. Mm -hmm. And so what I actually say is go for the no. Because if you say no to me, two things happen. Number one, it means I'm actually in the game. And John, I don't know about you, but if I'm not sure about something, I'm going to say no is my default position sure. to give myself space before I say yes. So the moment I hear the word no, I go, okay, now we can both relax because I've got the no and the other person hasn't committed to the yes. Now we can have a great conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm only as good as the practice that I generate. So you and I are sales athletes. And I'll tell you, John, that I get very nervous when I don't have enough conversations like this. I hope you can tell that I'm having a lot of yes. these conversations right now uh, because I feel sharp and I feel in the game and it's only because I'm doing a lot mm -hmm. of it. Um, the first step uh, is very simple. It's communicate like magic. Because if you think about what communication is, I say something to you yep. and a single word, John, creates a chemical change in your body. So, John, let me ask you a question now. Um, when you get really excited, what's your favorite phrase? Like, what's a John Goldenism? Oh, that's a good... I think I, I, I go, wow, that's that's really interesting, or wow, that's really fantastic. I mean, that's where I, you know, when I sit up and I'm like, I want to get in, I want to hone in on that. You know, like we've been doing the interview, when you say something that really resonates with me, I'm like, I love that, I want to I want to dive into that. Exactly. So, so I now know that for me to put a smile on your face, all i got to go is, wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> So what am I saying over here that, look, so I just got a chuckle out of you. You got a chuckle out of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you smile, you infuse the body with endorphins. Mm -hmm. So a simple word or a simple sentence like, wow, that's really interesting to somebody else may not mean anything. To John, it's a trigger to make him happy. Mm -hmm. So you've got to communicate with people in a way that makes them happy. Now, if you want to make Mike Lipkin happy, mm -hmm. you want to tell me that this is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Because that's my word, right? If you were to ask me what my strategy for success is, it's two words. Be excited. I, right. I don't wait for the world to excite me. I get excited just by breathing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, by the way, um, when people lose their health, the only thing they want back, John, is their health. Yes. But when people have got their health, they take it for granted. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm one of those guys. And uh, John, I don't know how old you are, but you know, it seems to me we're at least a similar demographic, sure. give it a couple years. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you know, the older I get, the less I take being healthy for granted. Mm -hmm. So if you want to excite a guy like me, you want to talk excitement, you want to talk vitality, you want to talk energy, and most importantly, you want to talk about 
creating a, a million jobs over five years or helping 100,000 people become disruptors. Mm -hmm. So the thing about communicating like magic is to create a chemical change in another person simply by the words that you use. And there are three principles which are more important than any other. The first, John, is to focus on the prize. So I now know that your dream is a million jobs mm -hmm. in five years. You know that my dream is a million books in a year. So you want to keep coming back to what my dream is, just as I'm going to keep coming back to what your dream is. The second key principle that I tell people is really listen. So if I listen to everything you say, if I listen to your gestures, then I'm going to calibrate and uh, customize my message specifically to an N of one, which is you. Mm -hmm. And then the third principle, and this is as important as any other principle, is be a great place to work. What do I mean by that? Well, we all work in companies that try and be great places to work. Sure. But my question is, how is the five to 10 feet around you? So if I come within five feet of you, do I feel like I'm in a great place? Mm -hmm. What's the field of energy around you? And so if you're going to be a great communicator, you want to radiate great energy. You want to be fascinated. Mm -hmm. And so here's a favorite phrase of mine. Uh, and if all people do from this call is take this phrase away, our job will be done. Two words. If someone says something to you, say to them, that's fascinating. Because we all want to be fascinated. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. What's our biggest fear, John? Our biggest fear is someone's going to think we're boring. Yeah, yeah. And that's why the one thing I'll never do, if I'm talking to someone, I'm never going to look at my phone because then I'm saying to the other person, this phone is more important than you. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay? So the sixth step, the sixth step is a crucial one, and that is called collaborate like a champion. Now, there are two meanings to the word collaborate. The first is that collaborate simply means working with other people towards a common goal. That's a garden variety mm -hmm. definition of collaboration. The second, John, is a champion collaborator works with others in such a way that they want to invest more time and resources with that person. So if you think about every sale, every sale requires two sales. Number one, I've got to sell you on spending time with me. Yep. Once you've agreed to spend time with me, then I've got to give you a high return on your time. Mm -hmm. And so great collaborators collaborate with other people so effectively that when they have the choice, they choose to give you their time. Because what's the one thing we cannot make more of? Yeah, time. time. Exactly. All right. And then, and then, John, the final step in the process is uh, be unconditionally enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know how many of your listeners have been up to Canada I don't know that there's a coffee uh, a chain of coffee stores called Tim Hortons down in California. No, there Tim isn't. Hortons? But I have visited Tim Hortons many times when I many times when I've been in Canada, and I know Tim Hortons has got such a fantastic uh, reputation and it's got a great atmosphere. But maybe share with the viewers why Tim Hortons is so successful. Exactly. So for those people who don't know Tim Hortons. Because here's another interesting stat, 80% of Americans don't even have a passport, mm -hmm. so now they wouldn't even be allowed into Canada, right? <laughs> but Tim Hortons is like a well-run, um, little bit more sophisticated Dunkin' Donuts, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's that kind of product. But anyway, at Tim Hortons, they have a mantra, they have a tagline, John, that says, always fresh. So they advertise the fact that at any time, 24-7, 365, you can walk into Tim Hortons and get a good price cup of coffee that's fresh and strong. They don't say sometimes fresh. They don't say fresh uh, on Monday afternoons. It's mm -hmm. always fresh. And frankly, there's no difference between you, me, your listeners, and Tim Hortons. We have to be always fresh. So, mm -hmm. you know, my final comment, uh, uh, John, on the, on the seven steps to dancing with disruption is that you never know when your greatest opportunity is going to present itself. Yep. You never know when you're going to be in front of your biggest prospect. But what you do know is that if you're not on your game, if yeah. you don't bring the heat in that moment, you may or may not win that deal. And frankly, there are so many variables in the world that the one variable I definitely want to control is my state. And so what mm -hmm. I know is this, whatever I'm feeling inside really doesn't matter to you or your listeners. You don't care what I'm feeling right now. What you care and what I care about you is how you're interacting with me yeah. and the world. So great salespeople are unconditionally enthusiastic when the bell has gone. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm not playing the game, so after this call, uh, if I'm sitting by myself, <laughs> I can have a self-pity party. Sure. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. But if that phone rings or I got a meeting with someone, I'm going to turn it on like a light switch. Yeah, and, the and totally. And the nice thing about all your steps, uh, Mike, is if you, uh, 
if you recap them all, I mean, if you look at it, everything is a choice, right? I have the choice right. how I'm going to show up. I have the choice how I'm going to react. I have the choice how I'm going to deal with disruption. I have the choice about whether I'm going to be enthusiastic when I talk to you or whether I'm not or whether I'm just going to be like, yeah, whatever. Whether I'm going to collaborate, it's all a choice. And I think getting back to where we started the conversation about there are so many things in life that we can't control, right? And we need to put those things aside and we need to look at the things that we can control. And one of them is the choices we make and how we react to situations. And as you said, if you're enthusiastic, if you're on your game uh, and you invite invite chaos and disruption to some degree into your life, then then you're on top of things. Then you're giving yourself a shot. If you're just if you're just kind of sit back and let it happen to you. Well, what's the point? Well, exactly. And, you know, the only uh, comment I can add to that, because that was very well said, John, is uh, from the great Andy Dufresne from the Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. Get busy living or get busy dying, man. And I got to tell you, John, when I do a presentation and I'll do between 100 and 120 presentations a year Mm -hmm. in my audience there's usually four kinds of people. First kind of person is what I call a prisoner. (laughs) They're sitting there as if to say, I hate you. Now, what have you got to say? And they look like they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. The second kind of person is a vacationer. They're someone who's kind of sort of quasi there, but they're happy not to be at work, Mm -hmm. right? The third kind of person is what I call a, a skeptic. So they're not quite sure. They want more proof. They're scared to move. They're just not intuitive. And then the fourth kind of person is the student. Mm -hmm. And the student knows that when he or she is ready, the teacher appears. So, you know, when you talk about choice and when you talk about summoning enthusiasm in the moment, you are cognizant of the fact, John, that in the United States and Canada, uh, we live in a free country where Mm -hmm. you choose where you are and that irrespective of whatever your obligations are at any given moment, You've got to be the captain of your own ship or the master of your own destiny. And frankly, what I'm seeing in sales is that uh, people choose people who seem to know where they're going, who are confident in their choice, and fundamentally who show how happy they are to be engaged in the interaction. Yeah, I, I, I love that, Mike, what you just outlined there is perfect. And I, and I absolutely believe that is that everybody is where they're, as you said earlier, everybody is where they're supposed to be. And guess what? You, we're all responsible for where we are today. So if we're if we're choosing not to make the best of it, if we're choosing not to engage, if we're choosing not to improve or whatever, that's fine. That's a choice. Yeah. But you're but nobody else other than you is accountable or responsible for where that leaves you. Yeah, so, so look, let me add mm-hmm. what I think could be the most important thing I can share in this whole conversation. Mm-hmm. And that is uh, what I brand as collaborative generosity. What do I mean by that, John? So, look, I'm having this conversation with you and we both salespeople. So I'm hoping that someone watches this and says, oh, my God, that guy, Mike Lipkin, where's he been all my life? I want to bring <laughs> him into my organization and pay him thousands of dollars to motivate my people. Obviously, mm-hmm. I want that outcome to happen. But as importantly, John, I just want this moment to be a great moment. So when you gave me the opportunity to be on your show, I wanted to make this show legendary. Mm -hmm. Of all the shows that you've done, I want people to look at our interaction and go, wow, what a great show. What a great episode. That guy, Lipkin, that guy, Golden, together are magic. So what I want to say to your folks is this. Whenever you're working with someone, Your going in position should always be, how do I help this other person win their Academy Award? Mm -hmm. If you do that, the money will follow. But if you go into the conversation and your filter is, how much money can I make? Or how can I close this deal? Or how can I use this person to make me successful? You may even close that deal, but you won't open up a revenue stream. You won't turn that other person into an advocate, a fan, or a mobilizer of yours, whereas What I have found over the years is whenever I have been collaboratively generous, whenever I have made a difference, I've made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. When I've gone in being too focused on my own well-being or my own interest, it hasn't gone well for me. It's like uh, it's called karma economics. If you do the right thing, your karma is going to be great and the money follows. Yeah. And I hope that that has come through strongly in this. Course. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's a great place to finish, Mike, because I completely agree with you on that. And I also say that if you're if you always do the right thing, as you say, if you go out to help people, 
Whether it's in business or life, quite frankly, sometimes it's a tougher road, but the reward will come in the end because you did the right thing. And I think that's a, that's an important thing, as you say, being collaborative or karma economics. I love that because I always believe money will sh- money will show up and follow if you always do the right things. That's right. So 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 let me give you a final thought here, mm-hmm. and it, it goes directly to your name, and that is pipeline, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I I think you're absolutely right. If you front end loading your contribution, so you're educating and contributing and growing and building, there is a lag between your activities sure. and the result. But if you do enough of those all the time and you've got a pipeline of prospects, you're going to have a steady number of those that come to fruition on any given day. But the best time to prepare for the future is right now. You know, there's an old Japanese saying that says the best time to plant a tree was 25 years ago. The <laughs> second best time is now. <laughs> so don't do it, right? Yeah, I love that. That's a perfect. Uh, you've got a better ending than me. That was a perfect ending. Um, so, Mike Lipkin, uh, this has been a fantastic interview. Again, Mike's book is Dancing with Disruption. Mike Lipkin, you'll find it in the bookstore on, on Sales Pop. Uh, and uh, I really would encourage you help Mike hit his goal because having gone through the seven steps, I think they make complete sense. And I think this would be a wonderful investment. And as we always say to people on this show, invest in yourself. Don't wait for other people to invest in you. Invest in yourself. So here's a great book to add to it. So, Mike, uh, just quickly before we end, how can people find out more about you? Yeah, so uh, just go to MikeLipkin.com. Go to Amazon.com. Go to Audible.com. My books are there uh, in uh, hard copy. They're there in soft copy. Uh, You can listen to me talk for seven hours on the book. And uh, you can even email me, mike.lipkin at environiks.ca, uh, hashtag Lipkin. And uh, I look forward to uh, our next uh, exciting engagement, John. Fantastic. Again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank so you. I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.